Y'all ready for this? Trigonometric identities. It's a fun time. This is one of my favorite things in math. It's like a little puzzle, like a Sudoku, something you know is solvable. You just gotta figure it out. It's like a puzzle. It's awesome. Okay, so first let's talk about what an identity is versus an equation. So an identity is an equation that is true all the time. It's true for all values of the variable. So if you go back to linear equations, something like this would be an identity because no matter what x you put in, you'll get that left side equals right side. Okay? With equations, it's only true for one value of x. Okay? There's only one point of intersection. But these are really the same line, just written in two different ways. So those are called identities. Okay, it's because it's true for all values of x. Both sides of the expressions are equivalent, and if each side were separated and graphed, they would be identical graphs. So, in, tri in trigonometry, we also have identities, but it's not always obvious like it is with a linear equation where you could just distribute. So, to prove an equation is an identity, you have to separate the identity into left side and right side, okay? Don't leave the equal sign then you just kind of manipulate each of the sides until you get them equaling each other. Okay? So, here we go. To the first two identities that we're going to prove, we're going to use those two identities to prove a whole bunch of other types of identities. So these are called the fundamental trigonometric identities because they're used so often to prove uh, more complicated equations are, are in fact identities. So with both of them, we're going to go back to our definition of sine, cos, and tan on the Cartesian plane. So we have to remind ourselves here that sine theta can be defined just as y over r. Cos theta is x over r. And tan theta is um, y over x. So our left side is sine theta over cos theta, and our right side is tan theta. So if we replace tan theta with y over x, now I'm going to try to work this left side so that it's also y over x. So sine theta is y over r, and then divided by x over r. So here you're dividing fractions, so you can flip and multiply. So you get y over r times r over x. The r's cross off, and you're just left with y over x. So the left side is y over x, the right side is y over x. So that's proven now that left side equals right side. So that means that this is true all the time. So anytime you see tan theta, you can replace it with a sine theta over cos theta. And vice versa, anytime you see a sine theta over cos theta, you can replace it with tan theta instead because they mean the exact same thing. They're equivalent. Okay, now we have this is called a Pythagorean identity. So this is really the main guy we're going to prove here. And then these two are just different rearrangements of that main guy. Here we just isolated for sine squared theta, so we just moved the cos squared theta over. And here we just isolated cos squared theta by moving the sine squared theta over. So this is the main one, and then you get these two just by rearranging that main one. All right, so we're gonna get to start with our definitions of y and x. So we have y over r squared plus, uh, sorry, x over r squared, okay? And on the left, that's the right, the left side. And on the right side, we just have 1. So how are we going to massage this to make it just be 1? Okay, well, let's do this. So when you're squaring a, a fraction, you square top and bottom. So you have y squared over r squared plus x squared over r squared. So they have a common denominator, so you can write it just as one fraction. I'm just going to write it as x squared plus y squared over r squared. Now, if you go back to the definition of x, y, and r, here's r, here's x, and here's y, and they're always formed by a right triangle. Okay? So, that, or if you think about it on the Cartesian plane, you would have this theta here, 
this would be y, this would be x, and this would be r. So because of Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So that means that x squared plus y squared can be replaced with an r squared, again, because of Pythagorean theorem. So that gives you r squared divided by r squared, which is just 1. So now we have left side equals right side, and we've proven this Pythagorean identity. So these two identities, you just have to memorize, okay? You have to know them. You need to know these as well, but these are just coming from that one. So if you have this one memorized, uh, you should be able to just develop these. So you absolutely have to know these when you're doing trig identities because you'll use them all the time. <coughs> excuse me. Oh, excuse me. So if you go on and look at the examples in the notes, you'll see the type of stuff that we're about to do, okay? Uh, you'll see how different the left side and the right side look. So you have to be good at algebra, good at adding and subtracting fractions, good at factoring, in order to be uh, successful at proving these trig identities. Alright, so you have to have those skills in your back pocket as well as knowing these fundamental trig identities. So before we actually go through and, and prove some of these, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks. Okay? So the first one is to simplify the more complica complicated side first. Okay, sometimes um, there's one that you, you're like, I don't really know how I can change that. So change the other side until it looks like the original side. Okay? Um, right. Find a common denominator, then add and subtract. So if you end up having something like, I don't know, 1 over sine theta, theta, plus 1 over cos theta, the common denominator would be sine theta, cos theta. Okay, you have to multiply them together. So that would give you cos theta, right, plus sine theta, over sine theta cos theta. Okay? So this is the type of stuff that I'm assuming you'll know how to do because it's just adding fractions, getting a common denominator. That's what I'm talking about when I say your algebra skills have to be strong. All right? Uh, another big, big, big hint is that anytime you see tan, you should change it into sine over cos. Okay? It just makes it much simpler if everything in your expression involves sine and cos. That way you'll know how to get, like what you need to do to get to where you're going. Sometimes you need to factor. So don't forget difference of squares. So it's usually going to be common factoring, okay, or using a difference of squares. Like, so if you have, for instance, um, sine squared minus cos squared, you can get sine plus cos, sine minus cos. Or if you have something like cos squared theta minus 1, that could be cos plus 1, cos minus 1, stuff like that. Okay, but if you also have something like sine, co sine theta cos theta plus cos squared theta, let's say, you could factor out a cos theta and be left, I'm oh, sorry, and be left with sine theta plus cos theta. Okay, so there's all kinds, of, so this is common factoring. These two here are examples of a difference of squares. So just keep an eye out for how you can factor. Okay, then look for expressions in which the Pythagorean identity can be used. So that's, a, remember, sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. Remember, you are manipulating the expressions until left side equals right side. Sometimes it's simpler to manipulate one side. Sometimes you need to manipulate both sides to get to where you're going. Look for what you need to change in order for left side to equal right side and make it happen. Okay, I'll model this as I do the examples. And then you'll also, another trick is to multiply the entire side by the equivalent of 1. Okay, so that's like, for, in, for instance, if you have sine uh, theta over cos theta, and I multiply it by, let's say, sine theta over sine theta. Okay, this is the equivalent of 1, so I'm allowed to do that. And it would give me sine squared theta 
over sine theta cos theta. So that might be useful um, in my work as well, but we're not really looking at that until next class. All right, so let's actually prove some identities. We'll start slow, pretty simple. Okay, so the first thing you do is separate your left side. So tan theta, cos theta, and your right side, sine theta. Okay, so this right side is as simple as it can get, so we're not gonna touch it at all. But this left side, we have a tan theta. And remember, any time you see a tan theta, you should switch it to sine over cos. So this tan, we're gonna make sine theta over cos theta times cos theta. And now notice these cos thetas can cross out, so we're left with sine theta. Now we can say left side equals right side. Yay, give yourself a pat on the back. All right, left side is tan squared theta. Right side is sine squared theta cos to the negative two theta. Well, let's just change this into sine and cos. So tan squared theta is sine squared theta over cos squared theta, okay? Because tan is sine over cos, so tan squared is sine squared over cos squared. Okay, and cos to the negative two, remember a negative exponent means that you flip top and bottom. So this is just sine squared theta times one over cos squared theta. That's what the negative exponent means. Okay, it doesn't mean that this is negative, it just means that you flip it. Okay, so this when you multiply through, it's just sine squared theta over cos squared theta. Okay, because if you think about that as a fraction, it's just over one, you multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms. Whoop de doo. Fun times. All right, so that's not too bad. Hopefully. So now we'll get into two more more complicated examples. Okay, prove that tan x plus 1 over tan x equals 1 over sine x cos x. So again, separate them out. Pretty simple, so I think I'm going to leave it for now and just deal with these tans because I want to change them into sine x and cos x's. Okay, so anytime you have a fraction over a fraction, okay, see where you have multiple levels, like this is one, two, three levels, you never want to deal with that. Ugh. You only want to ever have two levels of fraction to deal with. So Leave this the same. This is 1 divided by sine x over cos x, which is the same as 1 times cos x over sine x. Okay, just flip and multiply. So you have sine x over cos x plus cos x over sine x. So you need to get a common denominator, okay, which you can get just by multiplying them together. So your denominator is going to be sine x cos x. Okay, um, to get this to be sine x cos x, you multiply it by sine x. So that means you also multiply the top by sine x. So sine x times sine x is sine squared x. Okay, to get this denominator to be sine x cos x, you're multiplying it by cos x. So that means the top is also multiplied by cos x. So cos x times cos x is cos squared x. Now because they have the same denominator, you can write it as one big fraction. So sine, x, sine squared x plus cos squared x all over sine x cos x. Now if you want to skip this step and just go to writing it to one fraction, you can, but some people don't quite feel comfortable with that yet. So if you need that step, it's fine. 
Okay, so now you might be thinking, well, this, the, what's good so far is that, notice my denominators are the same on the left side and the right side. So that's good. I don't need to do anything in the denominator. But I need a 1 on the top. How can I get a 1 on the top? So you're looking at this, you say, how can that be 1? And then you flip back to your note, and you're like, oh yeah, sine squared x plus cos squared x, that's the Pythagorean identity. That's just equal to 1. So instead of that, sine squared plus cos squared, I can just write 1. Phew, I did it. Okay, so a few things, a few big tricks that you'll use all the time are, are presented in this example. So the first thing is replacing tan with a sine over cos. The second thing is when you have fractions divided by fractions to flip and multiply, so you just have fractions. The next is when you're adding fractions, you need a common denominator. And finally, using the Pythagorean identity. So a lot of things at play here. And all skills that you need to understand because you will be using them a lot in your homework. And on the test, and on the quiz, and on the exam, and next year in grade 12. Okay, one more example for today. So prove that sine squared x over 1 minus cos equals 1 plus cos. Okay, there's a few things that you should train yourself to do. So train yourself that before you even get started, you compare both sides. So I notice that this side is not a fraction and this side is a fraction. So that means that somehow I have to make this not a fraction, which means I need to get rid of this denominator. How do you get rid of denominators? Well, you get rid of denominators by being able to cross off the bottom. So for instance, if I have x um, over, well that's not a good example, let me think of this again. If I have like x plus 1 over x minus 2 over x plus 1, I can cross off the x plus 1s and just get x minus 2, and I have no denominator anymore. We did that earlier this year with rational expressions. Okay, so that means somehow to get rid of this 1 minus cos x, I'm going to need a 1 plus cos x on the top to be able to cross them off. All right? So, hmm, I have a sine squared x. How on earth am I going to get a 1 minus cos x on the top if it's a sine squared x right now? So that's when you need to think about all the things you can do. Can I factor that? No. I mean, I can make it sine squared times sine squared, but that doesn't help me. Um, can I use an identity that I know? Well, I can't use tan, but can I use the Pythagorean identity? So I take a look back at that, and I see, oh, sine squared x can be rewritten as 1 minus cos squared x. So that looks good. Can't I just cross that off? Can't I just cross these off? Well, no, because they're not exactly the same. This is 1 minus cos squared, and this is 1 minus cos. Man, I was getting so close. What's going on? But wait a second. This is a difference of squares. This can be changed into 1 minus cos x times 1 plus cos x. So already some of you should be seeing that I basically solved it. Because now these guys cross off and I'm just left with the 1 plus cos x, which is what I want. Yay! Okay, so left side equals right side. So you have to continuously be comparing left side and right side to see Always look at the simpler side and say, what can I do to this more complicated side to make it look more like the simpler side? Okay, what tricks do I have up my sleeve? It's factoring, common denominator, and those identities, the, the tan and the Pythagorean identity. Those are gonna be the biggest tricks you have up your sleeve. So always just say, how can I get from where I am to where I wanna be? And what do I know that allows me to get there? And you have to trust 
that all these identities that you're given in the textbook and on the test and everything else are solvable. And that's why I like them so much because I know for sure they work. I just have to keep working until I actually figure it out. So in the, when we get to the homework, you'll see they start quite simple and then they ramp up in their difficulty. So this is the kind of thing that perseverance is absolutely necessary for. You can't give up, okay? You might do a ton of stuff and get frustrated and have to start completely back from scratch, but trust that there is a way to solve all of these. You just gotta have that perseverance and not wanna give up. And then when you finally get it, oh, it's the best feeling in the world. So thanks for watching and I hope you learned lots.